Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions. This song today is going to tie up the middle of the week for our random rumble week. And uh, yeah, so far we've had a couple of really good tracks. Looking forward to this one. Uh, I believe this is a composer. Uh, I'm not sure what uh, where they're from, but it's Gleb Koliandin. Coliadin, and uh, yeah, there's some sheet music here, and uh, looks like some piano keys across the top. So, I don't know, I'm pretty excited about this one. The song is called Insight, and uh, yeah, let's let's dig into this. this is what's going on? Yeah, nice alternating on beat and off beat accents. denied that resolution and just stuck with the uh, the leading chord. Yeah, alternate between that uh, the the dotted quarters with the quarters. dynamic work leading us here. Oh man. I like how there's this constant jumping back and forth between the repetitive sections and the melody heavy sections.
yeah, that's homework on the uh, at the end there. Uh, moving along with some of the lower end stuff that we saw. That was gorgeous. All right, so man, talk about uh, just a powerhouse track. Uh, there is a lot going on here. I'm going to try my best to touch on everything, but it was a, a very deep song, and uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot I missed just because it's a first listen, but also because I'm going to try to be recollecting everything uh, to talk about. So let's dive into this, though. So one thing I really noticed is that there's this constant back and forth between sort of repetitive sections where we get sort of a one bar well not really a one bar phrase but uh, a single phrase that gets repeated and uh, we kind of see a bunch of repetitions sometimes there's a bit of layering there but it's sort of more of a static section compared to its contrast which would be more dynamic work which is where we see the uh, strong melody lines we get those nice piano runs we have the sax solo um, we have those moments where we have a strong melody over the foundational work. And then, like I said, that's juxtaposed with the other elements of the track, which tend to be a little bit more static, but focus more on layering and dynamics rather than an ever evolving melody line. Um, it's a little more cyclical than linear. And it's just really fascinating to see, you know, jump, jumping back and forth between the two. Uh, listening to a lot of metal bands, uh, for the channel, we tend to see bands stick with one or the other. Uh, very, very rarely do we see a band that can just so effortlessly jump back and forth. So this is sort of a real treat for me. There's also um, some interesting genre flipping in here too. It's the piano work. I don't. I don't even know where one begins and the other. There's. There's definitely some strong classical influence in here, but I also hear some funk and rock and just overall jazz working its way into. And like I said, I'm not really sure where one starts and another ends. It's just sort of this ever molding metamorphosis of genre, and it is phenomenal. The it's just it's not like I can even say you know this section was classical and this one lean jazz it's just you know moments of the song you're like okay you know I, I feel a little more jazzy from that one but we move right back into sort of the muddled conglomeration uh, conglomerate sound before you know it like this little jazz part ekes out and you're like oh yeah that was kind of jazzy and then it like comes back into the 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 ever changing ball and it's just really cool to see both of these elements come together where there aren't any sort of desperate parts where I can easily identify one or the other um it was really interesting hearing that jazz section come in though I can't say I was expecting that I figured we were going to be really strong with the classical and jazz all the acoustic instruments and uh well I think we had an electric bass but it wasn't distorted just a really nice clean electric bass and uh yeah when we started getting uh the electric guitar that came in and then these uh these <laughs> quick double bass kicks uh just oh man we entered into this really cool rock leaning into metal at least in the drum work uh it was just really interesting to hear that underneath the piano and Sax, I don't think the saxophone was still there. I don't remember what else was playing at that time. But some of the more traditional acoustic instruments playing on top of this, uh, you know, this uh, electric guitar and then the, the really rock metal drum patterns. Just really cool stuff. Um, so what else really stood out to me? Oh, well, the piano playing. I... I see a, a picture here in the uh whatever these recommendations are whatever they call them at, at the end of a video <laughs> when they try to get you to watch more things on youtube uh there's another one with gleb and uh is is that is that one is that the composer's name or is that like the name of the group because uh the picture has a pianist and a drummer oh and they're called progressive rock at least this channel is calling them progressive rock 2018 
Interesting. I'm going to have to dig into this because, uh, you know, given the sheet music and the piano at, at the top of the album art, and then, of course, the heavy piano presence and, uh, you know, just some more, some more of the classical elements, I kind of figured that this was more of a classical uh, composer that might dabble a bit in rock, but uh, I have maybe other songs are more rock oriented. Yeah, like I, I'm so intrigued by this. Where, <laughs> where do things start and others begin uh, or end? I think is how that analogy works. There's just a lot of really fascinating combinations of ideas here, and it is, I don't know, it, it, it's got. I'm enthralled by it, to be honest. Um, I, uh, <laughs> the, the thing is, is that it's, I can hear the rock elements trying to shine through, um, and they do at some points, but there's also these really strong experimental theoretical aspects that tend to associate with jazz and classical that I think dominate a lot of the sound, especially when you start looking at some of the chordal work that he does. Or they do. Like I, I don't, I don't know if this is a single composer or that, or you know, Gleb Kolian, Col Koliadin, is the name of the band. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of really cool textural work going on with the chords, the chord relationships, what kind of chord modes they're using. Um, there's a there's a lot of. I don't want to say unusual because we, <laughs> at least in in the Western idea uh of of music and the notes that we have and the chords that we've created it's not like you can uncover a new chordal mode we've identified all the stuff in our music system so uh unless he's using a microtonal keyboard everything is something i've heard before <laughs> So unusual is kind of not the word I want to use, but I think it's going to work. He uses a lot of unusual chords, uh, specifically chord modes, to bring out emotions or textures, musical feelings that I don't typically hear in that sort of rock context. And it's really interesting to hear him utilize this stuff within an environment that it it traditionally isn't. Um, e even some of this stuff doesn't get used that often when you look at some of the more popular classical works. And, well, part of that is a failing on our society because a lot of our popular classical works are not modern. We still tend to, you know, support and buttress and push forth Baroque and Renaissance pieces uh, when I, when I ask you what you're, you know, name me a classical composer, chances are what you're going to tell me comes from the Baroque or Renaissance era. And, uh, we just don't do enough to promote and to teach about classical composers that are from our time. Um, so there is a lot more experimental stuff going on as far as modes and note relationships and textures, uh, in a lot of modern classical works, but that's not usually the stuff that a lot of us get to hear or learn about or know about. So, yeah, uh, so that's sort of a, <laughs> a caveat because I was about to say, or maybe I did say that even some of the things that is, that's being used here isn't used that often in classical, but it's the the caveat there should be that it's not used that often in the classical that's traditionally taught. Um, we do see a bit more of this in jazz, especially when you go into bebop and fusion and we start seeing some of the more experimental sides of jazz. It's kind of the same thing with classical. You start looking at some of the more experimental stuff and you're going to find um, some of these interesting modes and uh, really not really just the modes themselves, but how they clash against uh, the foundational work, the atmosphere work, all the music that's going around them. Um, I'm not sure what mode or chordal relationship was being utilized in that piano solo, but there were some crunchy notes. I'm not sure if, <laughs> if that really conveys. That's sort of the feeling I get when I hear them. They're notes that aren't super dissonant. It's not like they are... Uh, you know, a few cents off, 
uh, and and it's like uh, they're out of tune. It's not the same kind of dissonance as that. It's not the same dissonance as playing um, two really close notes uh, that don't necessarily fit inside of uh, you know a chord stack. It's it's different. It's it's less dissonant and just more uncomfortable. And uh, yeah, I I I, I wish. Well, I mean, there's sheet music in the in the album art, so I'm kind of hoping that there's some sheet music around for this. I'm I would like to know what's going on there, uh, you know what what notes he's picking and what notes it's being played with, and how that clash is coming about. It's a very unique sound, and uh, yeah, I'd I'd like to know <laughs> what note relationships we're looking at that. Uh, to, to create that, like I said, uncomfortable feeling. It, it's not, it's not dissonant, but it's not, yeah, I don't know. It's not even like we hit something diminished or, yeah, I'm just I, I'm just gonna have to hope there's sheet music so I can see what's going on there, because it is just this uncomfortable feeling every time um, he picks these few specific notes. The rest of his solo sounds really good, and then there's these couple of notes, and of, of course it's intentional. I'm not calling it out as as bad playing or a poor solo. There's these couple of notes that intentionally rub against the rest of the music in such a way that, like I said, it's not. It's not that it's not the dissonant feeling. It's just this uncomfortableness. Like the notes should not go together, but I don't hear that dissonant warble. Uh, I don't know. I'm intrigued. Um, but yeah, so I'm I'm just I'm really blown away by this, and I am curious how far this progressive rock idea goes because, like I said, the beginning of the song really had me thinking it was more classical. Uh, with some jazz, sort of progressive classical, pro progressive jazz, uh, and a sprinkling of rock, just because we went through so many different other ideas, why not throw in, uh, you know, an electric guitar and some double bass kicks? The rock part really seemed less of a core part of the identity of the song. But, as I've said before, it's just one song from a single you know, album, a single time of this group or this composer's life, uh, I can't really judge an entire collection of works based on just the one song. So it's very possible that this is more of an outlier against some more traditional progressive rock elements uh, in other songs. Regardless, though, it, uh, it, it has me enthralled. I, I do need to know more. Uh, this is where you guys come in. Though, hit me up in the comments. First of all, Hit me up with more tracks. What should I be checking out from Gleb Col Koliadin next? <laughs> I guess help me with that pronunciation too. Someone tell me how to pronounce that last, uh, that second word or last name if it is the composer. Um, and if you enjoyed this, if you didn't, anything that stuck out to you, anything you might disagree with me with or completely agree with me on, go ahead and drop those kind of comments as well. I love reading them and I participate in the comment section. Uh, I, I read everything that gets put down there. So above that, the description box. If you want to check out Twitter, Discord, Patreon, the request spreadsheet, all those links are in there. There's also a like, a subscribe, and a bell underneath that. If you could press those, they help out the channel immensely. I'll be back tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC, with another song for Random Rumble. We get to see another just oddball pick. Like I said, all 10 songs that could have come up this week were beyond my knowledge. Even as far as, you know, I've seen all the requests, or most of the requests, um, especially the more popular ones. I'll recognize a band name, even if I haven't listened to them. I don't think I recognized any of the selections for this week. So, uh, yeah, I hope we get more stuff like this. This is really interesting, and I'm glad we got to check it out now because I don't really see any theme that it might have fit with. Uh, I mean, I guess technically it would fit in Progressive Rock Week, but... It's not one of the big ones. I would, this uh, this channel has a hundred subscribers.
the song's only been listened to 2,000 times in three years. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure that this would have ended up on a poll. So uh, that's what I really love about Random Rubble is getting to check out stuff like this that I don't think we would have seen otherwise. All right, well, until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you'll listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Thank you.